Hello, everyone. Welcome to the five W's of decoupled websites. My name is Steve Persh, technical product marketing manager, and I am reorienting my uh, my Chrome windows here. All right. I managed to get them all mixed up just as I started presenting. Wonderful. All right. So this is a sponsored presentation here, five W's of decoupled websites. And as a sponsored presentation from Pantheon, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Pantheon as a platform. So Pantheon empowers web teams to move fast with confidence and deliver business results. And we see ourselves uh, as doing that in, in three primary ways. One of the ways we do that is by uh, uh, it providing what we call serverless CMS tools. So these are our, our tools that solve many of the detailed questions of running successful production grade Google and WordPress sites at scale. Questions like, what is the Nginx configuration? What is the database configuration? When I was a Pantheon customer, before I was a Pantheon employee, I simply wanted those questions answered for me. I didn't want to worry about the details of the server. So we now call that uh, set of functionality the, the serverless CMS. And uh, I'll, I'll be talking today about how we're going to apply that mindset uh, and that mentality to the question of decoupling Drupal. I'll also talk about how we apply that mindset to what we like to, uh, to bucket into structured agile workflows. Again, we don't want teams of developers to have to reinvent the wheel over and over again when they are developing lots of Drupal sites for lots of different clients. We don't want our customers to have to rethink, are we calling it dev test live or is it dev stage live? Those are the kinds of details that we think are just best standardized across all of your projects. And again, that's a mindset we think we can apply to decoupled Drupal. We also think we can apply that, um, that mindset and that value to what we call website portfolio management. Some of our customers, particularly university customers, often have hundreds, sometimes literally thousands of similar websites, for instance, across university departments. And we want those uh, web teams to be able to have as many efficiencies as possible. That's something we've done for a decade with regular monolithic Drupal, and we're confident we'll be able to apply that mindset uh, and those uh, particularities to the space of decoupled Drupal as well. And our mission, I should say, a very big picture, is to make the open web a first-class platform that delivers results. And a big part of why we want to be talking about decoupled Drupal is because we see that modern front end tools that often require a, a decoupled architecture are a key part of the way modern web teams are delivering more and more value, a key part of the way they are delivering results through the open web. So uh, to, to, to cut to the chase, so to speak, uh, to answer some of the questions that, that may be why some of you are here, we are building a pantheon for front and back end. We're developing two flavors, so to speak, of support for decoupled sites that I'll talk about in greater detail. At a high level, the first uh, flavor is decoupled bridge. This is a, a strategy for decoupling where we can take incoming traffic uh, at the CDN level and split that traffic between your Drupal content backend and your modern front end running out of uh, client side, sorry, server side rendered Node.js. We also see uh, perhaps the, the, the most popular technique for decoupling Drupal right now is to use Gatsby. That seems to be the framework that has garnered the most attention. That's a technique that requires static site generation. And for that approach, we're building a product that we're calling edge sites to emphasize that these sites are best that run at the edge of a CDN. So uh, again, this is a five W's presentation here. Uh, at the top, I wanna give you a, a TLDR for how this presentation will be structured. We'll be talking about the uh, the, the what of decoupled Drupal. The, uh, sorry, just rearranging my, uh, my windows here. We'll be talking about the what of decoupled Drupal, essentially separate code bases and architectures for public paths and administrative paths. We'll talk about the why, and the why essentially is, uh, as I was alluding to, it's to meet that mission statement, to, to deliver the best possible experience through the open web. Who benefits from decoupled Drupal? Well, that depends on your, uh, your role within the team. Some uh, members of the team, for instance, front-end developers are often very enthusiastic about adopting decoupled architectures. Other members of the team may be uh, more skeptical of decoupled architectures and for good reason. 
the answer to the question, where does this all work, can be a complicated question, although uh, the, the thing I'm happy to share here is that we expect Pantheon will become the answer to the question where for more and more teams in the years to come when it comes to decoupled architectures. When uh, is also a, a significant question, and the short answer is how about now? And ideally, uh, uh, after your goals are clearly defined, and the how is essentially one step at a time, kind of a, a bonus question beyond those five W's. So what, again, is decoupled Drupal? To talk a little bit more in detail about the, the two variations we're looking to support, one, again, is called decoupled uh, bridge. We're currently delivering this in early access based with our professional services team. And this is, uh, again, using JavaScript uh, based frameworks, JavaScript based templates, particularly React and Vue.js, rendering those on a Node.js server and splitting traffic between uh, Node.js and PHP at the edge. The frameworks that we're looking to or expecting to support with this approach uh, on the WordPress side, there's a, a framework called Frentity built specifically for WordPress. Next uh, in the wider world of web development seems to be the most dominant framework for this uh, approach, uh, closely followed by Nuxt. And we're actively soliciting feedback for what types of frameworks, what specific frameworks the Drupal community would want to use. What is monolithic Drupal? I think is a question that will help us understand what exactly is decoupled Drupal. What are we comparing against? To understand that, I'd like to talk about uh, the first website where I tried to really extend and go beyond what I thought was possible with theming monolithic Drupal. When the iPhone came out uh, in 2007, that presented a huge challenge to front end developers. How do we make these monolithic sites that were architected for a desktop first or a desktop only world? How do we make them work on a tiny mobile phone? I expected this to be a, a very difficult challenge. Well, the first customer, the first paying customer that I really needed to do that for, it turned out to be much simpler than I expected because I was able to scope the challenge down to, well, this is a relatively simple Drupal site. They have a menu, they have a, a few hundred nodes that are a little more than title, primary image, body field. It seems like all I need to do is make a sub theme that overrides some CSS, changes where the menu renders, the title, the image need to change slightly, but these are questions of, of CSS. And in less than a day, I was able to take that monolithic site and make a sub theme that just worked in, uh, in mobile devices. I was, I was not fully understanding why these devices were causing such consternation in the wider web development world. So why does decoupling then enable some teams to more easily reach their goals? I think that requires us to think more deeply about what really are the goals of the website. And, and that should require us to put ourselves in the mindset of the site visitors. And here we're, we're starting to border on that question of who. So uh, why is it the case that the open web, why is it the case that sites built in Drupal to some degree struggle to compete with native applications? And uh, I think part of the answer is that responsive design was hard enough. For that relatively simple site, I was able to, to make a sub theme that worked on the iPhone in about a day, but um, was that sufficient? The, for more complex websites, the challenge of slow mobile networks, especially a decade ago, was a very difficult challenge to solve. The problem of underpowered browsers, the, you know, the original versions of, of mobile Safari that had just a fraction of the capabilities that were available to native applications, made it difficult for open web websites to compete with native applications. These phones also represented a fundamentally different relationship with technology that I certainly took a few years to fully appreciate. The fact that we carry these devices with us practically everywhere, the fact that many of us spend too many hours a day on these devices has changed the relationship. And therefore these websites need to deliver more types and often different types of value. So let's talk about what I like to think of as the five drivers of professional websites. We can think about this from the, say again, the perspective of a major university that uh, often needs all five of these, daily active users. A university, especially now in, in these pandemic times, is going to need to measure daily active users. Are those students who are learning online now actually coming back to the website every day and actually showing up for their online class? 
a university might want to promote its research to as wide an audience as possible. If they're doing groundbreaking research, that would require them to track unique users' reach. Universities need to encourage students to sign up for online degree programs that it, to some degree is a form of lead generation. Universities still need to sell sweatshirts and uh, if they can, football tickets and, and whatnot uh, through their website. And uh, a university uh, uh, may not have as much of this, this other driver of ad impressions or, or revenue that you would have with, say, a, a, a news-focused website, but a university website often treats its homepage as a, a sequence of, of ad slots. Each of these types of value is a type of value that can be delivered through a native application. For the open web to remain competitive for the next decade and beyond, open web websites need to be able to deliver all five types of these values. To make the open web a first-class platform that delivers results, these are the things we need to do. One way we think about that challenge at Pantheon is through this lens of a, a hierarchy of needs, so to speak, of impact at the top, productivity, and credibility. To deliver those five types of value, that is essentially a, a type of impact that web teams need to deliver. To, uh, to reach that uh, level of impact, a team needs to have some level of productivity, needs to be able to get work out the door. And to get work out the door, you need to have some level of credibility. You need to not be worrying about, does this website function at all? Are we going to get hacked? Uh, uh, is our, our server breaking uh, all the time? Uh, another big part of uh, why I think decoupled websites have, have started to appeal to teams who are particularly focused on getting results is it gives them a, a, a faster way to iterate, a faster, uh, a more helpful way to think about particularly that, that level of productivity. How are we as a team getting work out the door? With a traditional monolithic Drupal or, or WordPress website, you might use the workflow encouraged by Pantheon a workflow that encourages you to use multiple separate environments and multiple separate stages. And at each stage, you might answer different questions like, does this change meet my team's standards? Did I break anything? I could perhaps answer that in the dev environment. And does the site owner approve? That's a question I might answer in the test environment. A big part of the appeal of decoupled uh, architectures, in my opinion, is it allows teams to collapse those questions into fewer stages. If you cut your website in half, if you chop off Drupal's head, you can say, okay, the back end may require all of these separate stages because the risk or the damage done by breaking the database is so great. But if the front end is primarily presentation of content, it may be acceptable for us to move faster and move through fewer stages and go straight from something like a multi-dev to a live environment in one go. We can complete our cycles of designing, building, and measuring changes to our website much, much faster. And in short, this is the challenge that we at Pantheon think all, all web teams face, making this cycle as fast and efficient as possible. So who benefits from decoupling? I, I mentioned earlier that some members of your team may be very excited about this. Some uh, others in, in different roles may, may be more hesitant. I think stakeholders, the, the people who are asking for changes to the website might often see the appeal uh, in this process, especially using that frame of reference that I just showed of one only one step between here's a change you asked for and now it's live. That uh, That's great for a stakeholder who uh, alternatively in the monolithic Drupal world may be accustomed to seeing the change they've asked for and then waiting two weeks or a month for, uh, for the deployment to get all the way to the live environment as it moves through stages like uh, dev and test. Designers, uh, I think, may benefit from these faster iteration cycles as well, because if we're able to separate the part of the website where breakage uh, is most damaging, the back end, from the part of the website where iteration is most beneficial uh, and most in need of uh, quick cycles of feedback, designers could potentially make some CSS tweaks that they know aren't perfect, but get them to the live environment faster, knowing that they can do those CSS iterations, those design iterations uh, on a faster pace. I also think much of this, uh, uh, this push towards decoupled Drupal has been driven by front end developers. Uh, the browser has gotten super complicated over the last decade. And I think it's unrealistic to take 
uh, a world-class JavaScript developer and also ask them to keep track of the literally 10 layers of pre-processing and processing that are available to every single theme hook in Drupal. That's, that's too much for any person to keep track of. The last uh, decade of, of front-end web development has felt a bit like a, a wild, wild west. It's a lot to keep track of. Uh, and that's why we need to um, often reframe the, the, the way our, uh, our groups work to emphasize that this is a team sport. To make a website successfully, we need a group of people functioning together uh, as a team with each person knowing uh, where their scope of responsibility is. And to expect a, a front-end developer to, to understand everything from theme hook in Drupal to local storage in a browser, I think that is simply too much. A team needs to be able to uh, split up those areas of responsibility. So uh, th this is starting to, to bring me to the question of where, where does this all live? Uh, and that's a question your system administrators may be particularly interested in answering because they're probably going to be the ones tasked with provisioning the infrastructure that makes it all work. And the answer they might be led to is really complex public cloud configuration. There's documentation uh, on AWS that shows how best to run Drupal at scale. I'm not expecting anyone uh, watching this presentation to track the details here. Uh, Suffice it to say, it can be really complicated to run Drupal at scale on, on AWS. If you add on top of that, that you need all of the Drupal complexity and you need all of the front end complexity, that may be asking simply too much of your system administrators. That's why uh, many teams go to front end focused platforms and products like Netlify and Vercel. With Pantheon, we think we'll be able to add value by having back end and front end under the same roof. Uh, often working together uh, in better synchronization than you would be able to if you were splitting your project, splitting your website across Pantheon or AWS and some front end focused product. Back end developers may also be particularly interested in the question of where. One way I've liked to frame this topic over the last many years is if we're cutting off Drupal's head, where is Drupal's neck? And I asked that question somewhat rhetorically starting at, uh, about six years ago at, at DrupalCon Austin because that's when the, the headless movement was, was really picking up steam, but I felt like we needed a more specific an answer. Now, six years later, I think we've gotten to a much more specific answer. In the Drupal world, it seems like JSON API in core can be that answer to the question, where is Drupal's, uh, Drupal's neck? or GraphQL is another popular answer that you can bring in as a contrib module. Both of these have uh, had their, their trade-offs and, and their more detailed sessions that you can watch at, at DrupalCon that'll go into those specifics. What I wanna emphasize though here is that either of these will make for a more productive, more collaborative conversation between backend and front-end developers than I think you would have if you were keeping track of, again, the 10 layers of pre-processing available uh, in regular monolithic Drupal. If you know that JSON API or GraphQL is where you are making the cut between backend and frontend, then that gives clear expectations uh, to the backend developers and the frontend developers on either side. Uh, going to marketers and site owners, another role that, that may have some skepticism about this switch to decoupled Drupal. They may ask, why are we using Drupal at all? And I think that question of, uh, wh where is Drupal's neck if we're going to, to cut off its head leads to a follow-up question is, uh, where is the heart? Where's the heart of Drupal? Where's the heart of a headless CMS? I think the, the breaking up of different areas of responsibility of a website has forced the Drupal community and then the open source CMS community in general to reckon with the question, what is the core responsibility? What is the heart of Drupal? And I think uh, the, the heart of Drupal is the ownership and the flexibility that you get when you have an open source CMS. You own your content and the organization of that content in a way that's simply not possible if you're using a proprietary system as your, uh, as your CMS. Uh, also, just that editing experience itself is the heart of a headless CMS, in my opinion. And it's appropriate for the Drupal community to focus on making that content organization and content editing experience as good as possible because 
different areas of web technology have gotten so much better at the presentation of that content. It's also important to highlight that the, the reasons that I think um, content editors might be skeptical about decoupled architectures, they can lose their page layout uh, building functionality. They can lose the built-in previewing that they've taken for granted for a decade plus in Drupal. They might lose the instantaneous publishing of content because of um, uh, because of the, the switch to a, a static site generator. Uh, so that, that brings me to the question of when is it appropriate to go to something like Drupal? When would your team benefit from chopping off Drupal's head? I think you'll benefit from it when you can clearly articulate why you think decoupling will move you closer to your goals. Is your goal in decoupling uh, to, to have uh, that clear separation. Do you have a decoupled team? And that's the benefit that you want, bringing into alignment your team and your tools. Is it because you need the, uh, the front end to iterate independently than the, uh, independently from the back end and a clear separation of repositories even will, uh, will give you that? Or are you looking for just a, a higher level of designer and interactivity that's very difficult to achieve in monolithic Drupal? I want to be clear about what, what I do not recommend. I do not recommend changing everything at once. In the year plus that I've been leading Pantheon's uh, R&D efforts in this space, I've had lots of conversations with teams who are on often old complex versions of Drupal. And a few of those conversations have gone something like, we have a gigantic Drupal 7 site. It's nearly a decade old. It's got a whole bunch of content types. It's huge. And our plan is to rebuild it all in Drupal 9 plus Gatsby. And we're giving ourselves about a year to do that. And we're going to relaunch it all at once. I think that's a very risky idea. Uh, I think there are, there are better, safer ways to do that. So that brings me to the question, well, well, how? How can we decouple in a way that isn't quite so high risk as taking uh, a year to rebuild everything? I think it's important to check your premises in the smallest ways possible. If you have the, the, if you're starting from the premise that you'll get more conversions if you decouple a page, can you check that premise, check that hypothesis with only a single page? Do you have to decouple the entire website or can you decouple just one page? Or can you decouple just a microsite to check? Do our conversions actually go up? Do our developers actually collaborate together if we uh, chop this website in half? Does this publishing workflow actually work? It's one thing to say to your content editors, Things will change if we go to Gatsby, and it, uh, you may have to wait for your content to be published. And perhaps they'll say, oh, maybe that's OK. They might feel different after they actually try it. Again, I wouldn't recommend replatforming your entire web presence um, and then finding out if it's actually acceptable to your content editors. And can your system administrators uh, actually support the, the, the platforms that, that you're looking for? So again, uh, the, the direction we're going with Pantheon is uh, two products that we're developing. Decoupled Bridge, which is in uh, an early access phase now, and Edge Sites, uh, which is going um, straight to full productization and will be in an early access phase within, um, within a few months. Uh, I'm pausing here to look over at On Air and see if we've gotten uh, uh, any questions come in. I've got a few more slides that, that may be helpful to do, but it looks like um, just wanted to make sure we would also have time for questions. If you have any questions on anything I've said thus far, please do throw them into the chat, but because it looks like um, no questions have come in thus far, uh, I'll keep going with, with a couple more slides. I'd like to connect this idea of decoupled Drupal to a, a more detailed framework of how Pantheon thinks about uh, this idea of impact, productivity, and credibility. We think it's important to answer, what exactly do web teams do to enable each of these three things. What are the activities? What are the practices that lead to credibility, productivity, and impact? So to articulate that, we've developed this idea of web ops keys, as we call them. Six practices that lead to these three outcomes. Each of these six keys tie pretty well to decoupled Drupal in general. And I want to emphasize particularly how I see them relating to decoupled bridge, the product offering that's now in early access. I think decoupled bridge aligns pretty well uh, uh, with bookend keys, so to speak, with a key at the top and a key at the bottom. 
much of the reason teams are, are picking these tools uh, of decoupled Drupal is because they're starting with the hypothesis that if they decouple their website and they do so well, they will get more success, more success to be measured. And a big part of why that will happen is because these modern front end frameworks come pre optimized for performance in a way that Drupal does not, or, or in a way that Drupal hasn't kept up with to the extent that, say, a Gatsby or a Next.js has. So we've got uh, an assumption at the top, an assumption at, at the bottom. We'll get more success, and a part of the reason we'll get more success is because these frameworks are pre optimized. Again, I recommend checking these assumptions, assumptions as fast as possible and then iterating uh, upon what you learn from, from that check-in. So at Decoupled Bridge, I'm encouraging many of our customers to select often a single page or a single section of the website to decouple first. If you have something like a careers page that exists to get people to click on the apply for a job here button, that might be a good place to decouple first. That page has a very clear purpose. You want people to apply for jobs at your company. You're probably tracking that in Google Analytics. You may be able to check the performance of that page in something like Google Lighthouse. Decouple just that page. See if that actually gets better. It may get better, but it may not go off the charts. Can you iterate on that high value feature and get it even faster, get even more people clicking on the button you want them to click on? And if that works, then you may find more pages on your website that make sense to decouple. If it's not working, I think it's better to, to pause after a, a week or a month than it is to just proceed with six months of decoupling the whole website, only to find out at the end that it hasn't gone uh, as well as you wanted. Another key this connects to is the idea of collaboration. I think for web teams to be successful as a team, they need to be able to collaborate across disciplines. And a big part of the improvement in collaboration, that, as I see it with decoupled Drupal, is that often the, the primitives that we're talking about, the primitive of the React component, the Vue.js component, can make for a more productive collaboration discussion amongst your backend developer, your front-end developer, your designer, and so on. With a complex Drupal theme system that has only gotten more complicated as it's evolved and added features over the last decade, it can be difficult for the front-end developer, the back-end developer, the designer, and so on, to engage and have a common understanding. But because so much of the wider web development world right now orients itself around Vue.js uh, and, and React, there's a better chance that each person uh, in those various roles has a better understanding of how they approach the React component or how they approach the Vue.js component. Everyone has a clear understanding of where is the neck in this headless system? Where, uh, where are the parts that I'm responsible for? That should lead to better collaboration than the collaboration you may find in a monolithic Drupal project. We're also operating un under the assumption that these types of systems can be particularly hard to automate and particularly hard to maintain. If you have a Node.js code base uh, for your front end and a traditional Drupal website for your back end, keeping those two things in sync and keeping uh, the, the relationship working can be a difficult maintenance task. It can be difficult to automate deployments in such a way that they they work every time if deployments have to happen in a certain order and a certain coordination between back and front end. And this is where we think Pantheon will really add value. Again, if I were to cast myself back uh, into the mindset that, that I operated in as, uh, as an agency developer, I wouldn't want to be figuring out these questions for every single uh, project over and over again, the same way I, I don't want to figure out Nginx over and over again. So as I see, we've got uh, just a minute left uh, in the session here, I'll close by saying, if you're interested in either of these uh, product offerings, Decoupled Bridge or Edge Sites, please head over to pantheon.io slash decoupled CMS, fill out a form, tell us uh, about perhaps your Decoupled Bridge server-side rendered Node.js uh, project, which may be a fit for early access, which we're in now, or sign up um, for the email list related to Edge Sites, which will be uh, in early access sometime uh, coming soon in 2021. All right, I see I've got uh, under 30 seconds uh, now. So uh, I don't see any questions that have come in, but if you do have questions, you, know, you can hit me up on Twitter. At uh, Steve Vector is the Twitter username. 
Uh, I greatly enjoyed sharing this presentation with you here today. I hope you've had a great DrupalCon. Bye-bye, everybody.